patient um, is an 11-year-old girl who came in to see me, and really what she had was some swelling and a vascular stain on the bottom of her foot. And what was remarkable about that stain, which had been present since birth, is it wasn't uh, completely flat. So it wasn't just a regular port wine stain. It had a little fullness to it. It had this sort of little hyperkeratosis over the surface, and it was very warm and, and pulsatile. So the next obvious step in this case, uh, and you know, and this had been called a uh, hemangioma, as, as these often are, uh, but she was becoming increasingly symptomatic. So we did, in fact, get imaging studies on her. And I think it's interesting that uh, this child's age is 11. She had uh, been in puberty for a short period of time, and that's when this thing started to take off, and that's a telling part of the history. Um, what you can see here on these MR images of the foot are flow voids. That's all these little black dots all around here. Now what's interesting about these is, unlike in the brain where you usually see a compact nest, oftentimes AVMs in other parts of the body are not compact. You just see the flow voids. So what we can identify from this, we don't even need an angiogram at this point to make the diagnosis of AVM, and then we launch into a discussion with the patient and her family about what this is and what it's going to mean. because. This is going to be a difficult thing to treat, a, diffi a, a diffuse AVM uh, in the plantar aspect of the foot that can't be taken out surgically, that may have some sort of transvascular option, we don't know yet, but this is where the discussion in the clinic comes up. One of the most important questions that across the board with, when you're dealing with birthmarks that we ask ourselves is, is there a window of opportunity to get in and do something now that will prevent a problem down the road? And that's really the question that all parents legitimately want to know. And the answer in a case like this is probably not. In other words, sometimes AVMs, this one, um, there's an AVM classification, the Schobinger classification, this is sort of a tight, uh, two, one being perfectly quiescent and just sort of sitting there doing nothing. Class two would be it's growing a little bit, but it's really not causing ulceration or pain or local compromise. And that would be type three and type four would be where you're going into congestive heart failure because of an AVM. So it's a very simple classification. This would be uh, one where we would talk to the family very much about whether she's able to maintain her activities of daily living, which in fact she was, educate them, and then down the line, think about doing something like embolization um, with the idea that we would use that as a palliative treatment because we really, again, don't have any other quick fixes for this.